Hello, and thank you for joining us for our Euclid Public Library Educator Webinar, Using Picture Books with Older Readers. My name is Christine Piles, and I'm the Youth Services Manager, and I'll be your facilitator this evening. Before we jump in, I do want to make you aware of some of our goals for this webinar. My first goal is to share the benefits of using picture books with older readers, and I consider older readers grades 5 through 12. The next goal is to destigmatize picture books with older readers, and readers older than fourth grade tend to be discouraged from reading picture books. Next, we'll look at some tips for using picture books in the classroom, and finally, you'll receive some picture book suggestions for older readers. Readers of all ages have fond memories of being read picture books in story time or before bed. A lot of readers do not have memories reading picture books themselves. Um, there tends to be a jump from being read stories such as picture books and reading books yourself, which are those transitional early readers. There are a lot of children who have never read a picture book themselves, and they see these books as books people read to them. Um, picture books are foundational for literacy. Everyone has had a picture book read to them. Picture books often have vibrant pictures, large readable text for letter and number recognition, and may use rhyming and rhythm to tell a story. Every reader has a picture book that they remember fondly. Mine is Miss Nelson is Missing by Harry Allard. In fact, the teacher who read this to me was my third grade teacher. And I remember her first name was Viola and the Miss Nelson in question, her name is Viola Nelson. So I made that connection. At the same time, picture books have the power to transcend age groups. Not all picture books have vibrant pictures, large readable text and rhyme. Some picture books cover difficult topics. They have equally harrowing art and tell difficult stories about troubled people. Some picture books for older readers have hundreds of words on a page and would not lend themselves to a read aloud in story time. These are meant to be read by an individual. And some picture books are not meant for small children at all. If that's the case, why do we stigmatize older children reading these books that were intentionally written for them? The next slide is just some rhetorical questions I have, and these are the hills I am willing to die on. So why are picture books accepted for children five and under, but are stigmatized as being too easy? or too babyish for older readers. And I just have to get this one out here. We're not talking about graphic novels today, but why are picture books accepted for children five and under, but graphic novels with pictures and advanced vocabulary stigmatized as not real books? So this is just some food for thought, something to think about. All right, let's talk about the benefits of using picture books with older readers. First, picture books can teach advanced concepts in innovative ways. This can be done in your typical story time picture book or through nonfiction picture books that share information about a topic in a palatable way. The library doesn't really mix children's books and adult books on the shelves in our displays, and I really wish we would. Um, I personally have read the autobiography of Malcolm X, but I understand that it can be intimidating for many readers, especially adults. I am willing to bet that an adult interested in reading about Malcolm X, but isn't really ready to read such a long book, would be willing to pick up a picture book about Malcolm X. Um, these aren't picture books, but adults come in frequently asking for the who is and who was books. Um, we had a display out front several months ago, and we continue to get questions from, an adult, uh, from adults on a weekly basis about this display because of these books. So appeal is appeal regardless of the intended audience. Next, picture books support your lessons in a way that levels the playing field for your students, especially your reluctant readers. I prefer the term hesitant readers, so I'll use that term throughout this presentation. Um, picture books allow you to present information in simple ways that most students will grasp regardless of their reading level. Picture books can teach concrete topics such as math and science. Math Curse by John Skieska and illustrated by Lane Smith tells the story of a student who is cursed by the manner in which mathematics is connected to everyday life. This is perfect for students who complain, when will I ever use this? Um, I'm here to have fun and picture books are fun. So enough said there. Um, finally, picture books can be a gateway to other books. For example, Bad News for Outlaws, The Remarkable Life of Bass Reeves, Deputy U.S. Marshal by Vonda Michonne Nelson 
and R. Gregory Christie is an incredible nonfiction picture book about the first Black U.S. Marshal. It's truly a thrilling read geared towards grades three to eight, and I would never read this book in a story time. Um, but let's say you had an eighth grade student read this book and get very interested in the life of Bass Reeves in the Old West. Um, you could then recommend 2020's Black Heroes of the Wild West by James Otis Smith. Um, this book is part graphic novel and part history lesson. Uh, Bass Reeves gets a short comic story and the back matter of the book digs into the details of the whitewashing of the Wild West and the roles of black and brown people in the development of the Wild West. This could lead a reader to a modern cowboy story such as Ghetto Cowboy by G. Neary. G. Neary is amazing. If you have not read any of his books, please do it now. Um, all of these books are appropriate for an eighth grader and look how widely this reader could potentially read. When I recommend books during middle school visits, I always throw in a picture book or two. Um, for special needs classes, I will always read a picture book. And I saw, start off my picture book recommendation by suggesting that students read one picture book every school day. And by the end of the year, they will have read 180 books. Um, it's truly an accomplishment. You know, at the end of the year, you're like, wow, I've read 180 books. Um, it doesn't matter if they read all of the Harry Potter books over the course of the school year or 180 picture books. Reading is reading. Um, I don't know if any students have taken me up on my suggestion, but this could be a great goal for your classroom. As an educator, you should be taking steps to destigmatize picture books with your older readers. If you offer independent reading time, allow students to read what they want, no questions asked. When you put requirements on independent reading, it's not really independent anymore. Allow students to read a picture book or two during this time. If you have a classroom library, make sure that you include picture books. Yes, of course, there is a reason to make sure students are on level by having them read specific books. However, you don't just want them to go through the motions. Some readers might feel more comfortable reading something at a lower level or with fewer words every once in a while. You might even have a kid who read the Bass Reeves book coming to you for another recommendation. Next, you should teach picture books. Teaching picture books destigmatizes picture books to peers. Some kids get made fun of for reading below level. And if you educate readers and let them know that not all picture books are baby books, in fact, some picture books are written for students just your age, that peer stigmatization may lessen. Another way to destigmatize picture books is to offer them to students as read-alikes. So let's say you have a student who really liked the I Survived, the Sinking of the Titanic 1912. Uh, why not recommend a picture heavy book about the Titanic or other naval disasters? Maybe a student really enjoyed Diary of a Wimpy Kid and the Silly Jokes. You could recommend a book by Jory John, such as Quit Calling Me a Monster, The Bad Seed, or The Good Egg. John's books are a hit with every age group I've ever read them to. So do not discount picture books as being lesser than other reading. Don't forget, I'm gonna say it again, reading is reading. If a student reads four pages of a chapter book in 20 minutes or two picture books, they still read for those 20 minutes. Next, I have some tips for teaching picture books to older readers. So uh, first, treat picture books like you would a short story. What do you want students to take away from the book? You could read it like you would to younger kids asking questions along the way, but that's not entirely necessary. Um, use other media related to the topic, such as audio, video, or text. I did some research and I don't think there is a picture book about Orson Welles' 1938 War of the World's radio broadcast, but if there was, I would definitely use it alongside the audio of the event. Uh, I think kids would be super into that. Um, and feel free to switch out books with similar themes if you tend to get bored reading the same book multiple times a day. Picture books are great for identifying and creating thematic statements to start essays. Doing this with a picture book instead of a longer book can ease some of the stress students have with analytical work. After the students write the statements, they can turn it into a full paragraph. You could give them a stack of picture books to work on this skill and practice on their own. Picture books provide a way to assess their understanding without having to use a common or more difficult text. Next, picture book writers are very skilled at what they do, and you can uh, hone in on the writer's craft when you are teaching picture books. So you could ask questions such as, how does the author situate us? How is the character described? 
How are the words further explained through the illustrations? How does the illustrator's work deepen the message? How are words repeated? Is there any symbolism? Um, next, students may not be able to write good stories <laughs> because they get bogged down in the details or the story is just uninteresting. But by using picture books to study the art of the plot, students can create outlines of an existing plot and then work toward creating their own. Picture books accomplish telling a story using very little language and can help older readers be more concise in their own writing. Next, focusing on nonfiction allows your students to study their own craft when conveying factual information. Study nonfiction picture books to see how research can become an accessible and information-filled book. Just like you read a chapter book aloud in class, person by person, paragraph by paragraph, you can turn picture books into dramatic presentation for fluency and expression. Reading picture books aloud, performing them, and putting your heart into it helps with public speaking skills. It's also really cool to see kids connect with their silly side. Try reading The Day the Crayons Quit by Drew Daywalt and see how each student gets into their role as a specific colored crayon reading their goodbye letter. In order to go deeper with text analysis and discussion, sometimes students need a little confidence and picture books can help with this because they are generally unintimidating. An example would be maybe you're going to dive into the diary of Anne Frank and you just need something a little softer to get everybody started. There are picture books about Anne Frank and you can introduce some concepts using those books. Next, um, for inference, you can use wordless picture books, and David Wisner writes some really great ones um, for boosting their inference skills. They don't have to decode words, but rather they decode pictures. And don't forget to use picture books to introduce difficult topics such as death, suicide, war, drug abuse, etc. Seeing stories close to home or stories that are foreign to them allows an organic discussion to occur. Um, when I do class visits with middle school and high school, I always suggest a picture book or two, and it's usually two for sixth grade and one for seventh and higher. And I get on my soapbox and explain that reading and read is reading and that picture books, audiobooks, and graphic novels are all legitimate forms of reading. Finally, I wanted to suggest a few titles that may work for you. You would have to read all of these books to see if it's something that you would like to teach, but these are some really great picture books. Um, some of these I have recommended in class visits or read in class visits with um, great response. The first one is We Are Water Protectors. This was written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. Um, I read this one to middle school students in the special education classes at the middle school when I did a Zoom class visit. Students were very engaged with the vibrant colors and the breathtaking art. This book is the 2021 Caldecott Medal winner which uh, is an award given to the book with the most distinguished art. And it is a response to the Dakota Access Pipeline and the efforts of indigenous peoples to safeguard the earth's water from harm and corruption. This one is inspiring, attention grabbing, and focused on a serious issue. The publisher listed this one as grades K to three, but this is a great book to use when starting to introduce environmental issues to students. This could pair well with um, a few YA books, including Not a Drop to Drink by Mindy McGinnis, Dry by Neil and Jared Schusterman, and Life as We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeffer. This book received star reviews from Booklist, School Library Journal, Publishers Weekly, and Kirkus. The next book is Unspeakable, The Tulsa Race Massacre. This was written by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by the late Floyd Cooper. This book is about the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, an event in history that many have forgotten. The book is harrowing, moving, and serious. The late Floyd Cooper's illustrations are incredible and captivating. I suggested this book to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders in virtual class visits last school year, and as I was talking about it, I was bombarded with private messages from students asking if it was real and how they could get a copy. Do not underestimate the power of history paired with magnificent art artwork. I have since read this book on audiobook as well. It's about 20 minutes long and includes background no noise, almost like a radio broadcast. Um, this book received star reviews from School Library Journal, Publishers Weekly, and Kirkus. The next book is The Stuff of Stars, written by Marion Dane Bauer and illustrated by Equa Holmes. This book is listed as being for uh, K to fourth grade. 
but the attention grabbing abstract art will grab older readers. This book describes how the universe, earth, and a human child all came into being and how all are connected. This is an innovative and colorful book about the Big Bang, and um, it turns books on this topic on their head. It's such a unique and lyrical book, and this book received starred reviews from School Library Journal, Publishers Weekly, and Kirkus. This next book is Small Things, written and illustrated by Mel Tregening. This book is a graphic novel without words. It's a little too advanced to be a picture book in the traditional sense, but it is reminiscent of a picture book due to its size and length. This one is billed for grades three to six, and it is about a boy who struggles with anxiety. This anxiety is represented by a swarm of creatures that gnaw at him, leaving him feeling isolated and out of control. Sad and bleak at times, this book is also hopeful. The black and white illustrations bring the story to life, and this book receives starred reviews from Booklist and School Library Journal. Next is Shirley Chisholm is a Verb, written by Veronica Chambers and illustrated by Rochelle Baker. The publisher puts this as pre-K to second grade, but I do think this is above the comprehension or interest level for preschoolers. I think this is great for K through eight. I did a Women's History Month program last year, and it was intended to be an aged up story time for grades two to five, but I ended up getting five, six, and seven-year-olds. This was one of my selected books, but I felt it was too long for that age group. I ended up asking the group if they wanted a short book or a long book. Shirley Chisholm is a verb. And they chose the long book. I was present, uh, pleasantly surprised that they stuck with me throughout the entire book and they were wowed by Shirley's life and accomplishments. Um, I love this book because it highlights Shirley's verbs throughout the book. Uh, it's great for building vocabulary and the images are bold but are sparse upon the white page. Some pages are more white than illustrated and this helps make Shirley the star. Next is The Phone Booth and Mr. Hiroda's Garden, written by Heather Smith and illustrated by Rachel Wada. Uh, this book has the potential to be a tearjerker, just a heads up. It really choked me up. Um, this book is about a Japanese boy named Makio who loses his dad in a tsunami. His, name, his neighbor, Mr. Hirota, also loses his daughter. And Mr. Hirota builds a phone booth in his garden and he uses the booth to speak to his dead daughter and cope with his grief. Eventually, other villagers who have experienced loss use the booth to speak with their loved ones. And Makio tries the phone booth himself to process his own grief about his dad. This book receives star re starred reviews from Booklist, School Library Journal, Publishers Weekly, and Kirkus. Excuse me. Finally, we have The Remember Balloons. This is written by Jesse Oliveros and illustrated by Dana Wolcott. Um, here's another sad one. <clears throat> James has a bunch of balloons, each one representing a special memory. His parents have more balloons than he does, and his grandpa has more balloons than anyone. As his grandpa ages, he starts to lose his balloons and the balloons represent memories. The artwork is minimal, primarily black and white with the exception of the colored balloons. And this is a thoughtful and moving book about dealing with illness. This book received a starred review from Kirkus. And here's a spread from one of uh, the pages there. Finally, I wanted to share a resource for you to try. And um, I'm going to see go to our website so if you go to services databases click on n and go to novelist you can use this resource to find read-alikes for your students um, you can also type in so we talked about Anne Frank earlier you can put Anne Frank picture book And you can see several options of Anne Frank picture books. Um, there's also this Check Cleveland Public Library's catalog for this. Um, we're part of the Clevenet Consortium and we get access to novelists through the consortium. So it does default to Cleveland Public Library, but if you click on this, um, you'll also be able to see if we have it. Um, so this particular book Euclid does not have, um, but you can, Click on this and also get some read-alikes along the right side. I do know for a fact that we have behind the bookcase, 
pretty sure we have all about Anne. We have Meep and the Most Famous Diary. So there are um, a lot of picture books here that can introduce topics. You could also um, drug abuse picture books. I don't know what we're going to get here. So let's see. Bird by Zeta Elliott. So this is grades one through five. You can see some other books. So if somebody read this book, what book might you recommend? Um, this is just a great resource for your students. You don't have to know everything about every book. You just need to know where to find the information. I do not know everything about every book. Um, there are often times when kids come up and they ask for something and I have no clue what they're asking me about. So I use novelists to, um, find some stuff to recommend. So this might be a tool that you could use. Bring this back up so you can take a photo if you would like. This is just the information about how to access Novelist. And finally, we are here to help. Let us be your resource. Um, you can contact me. Again, my name is Christine Piles, and I'm the Youth Services Manager here at the Euclid Public Library. I can be reached at christine.piles at euclidlibrary.org or 216-261-5300, extension 5140. I hope to hear from you soon, and I hope you learned a lot from this webinar.